We're huge Mob Deep. Huge fans. Mob Deep. Fans. We're huge Mob Deep fans. We we just huge hip hop fans. Period. But um, my husband came home, and he can tell you like the beginning of the story. But he came home with these two books one day, and uh, the two he said to me, he's like, "Babe, you'll never guess what happened to me today." He throws a book on the table, and it's a cookbook written by a Prodigy about cooking only using the stuff that you get in jail. And so uh, I was just like, what? And on the front of it, it's like this little sweet potato pie, right? Like, it's my favorite thing to make, too. I'm like, how did he make sweet potato pie in jail? So at first I'm looking at it, and at first, honestly, I was just like, what is this? Like, And then I started to read it. And it is actually, in my opinion, one of the most poignant and fascinating moments in 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 in, in, in which hip hop plays a part in activism to me. Because what it did was it, it, it spoke to a lot of the issues that are within the prison system around nutrition and food justice and it did it without being preachy. It was very much the type of, of project that I would love to see more artists do. And it was a place that I just had never even thought that he would come from in and, and, and a, and a, and a form that was crazy. And the, the recipes, he even says, like, look, if you try these recipes, like, just be prepared. This is jail food. But this was him trying to come up with ways that he could eat healthy while he was in jail because, you know, he, you know, he was ill and he had, you know, a lot of health issues. And, and, and the, the idea here was that, you know, he had to preserve himself. And as a prisoner, they don't care. They don't care about helping you to preserve yourself. They could care less about your physical well-being. And at the time that people were talking about Khalif Browder, that, you know, the kind of violence that was shown him while he was in jail. This is another kind of violence. And I was just so impressed and so... Raging war on your diet. And raging war on your body from the inside out. And I was so impressed and I just, it touched me so much that I posted about the book and was telling people like, you got to buy this book. You have to buy this book. I wouldn't know that less than a year later that he would be gone, but um, I was so touched by this project and actually a little heartbroken that I never got an opportunity face to face to to tell him what an amazing project that it was and um, just how significant that I felt like it was at that time. But on top of all of that, as important as it was, it's funny as hell. And the stories that he tells in the book are just, are great. So you gotta pick it up. Rest in peace, Prodigy. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the story on that is just that I just happened to be walking down the street one day on South Street and Prodigy was actually in the sneaker store um, doing like a book signing. And so, you know, I just w w walked up into the store and there was Prodigy, you know, sitting there with a bunch of people sitting in chairs telling the stories all about his book. And at the time I hadn't, I wasn't familiar with it or what have you, but uh, just got a chance to sit there and listen to him, you know, speak on, you know, why he had written the book and, you know, the elo so eloquently. And, you know, of course, stories about the mob and what have you. and. Um, Got a chance to kick it with him a little bit after the sh after the show. He signed a couple of books for me, and again, so when I brought it home, my wife was like really, really super excited. But I met Prodigy and Havoc when I was really just getting into the business, actually, when I was about 15, 16 years old as well, when they were like the same age uh, at a music convention down in, in, um, in D.C., I think, at the time. And, you know, I, I went up to a friend's room and they were all in the bathroom doing what guys do when they be in the bathroom chilling. So to meet him so many years later, having, you know, put out so much great music that we really loved and respected and appreciated, and him being such a legendary artist, of course, he didn't remember meeting me back then, but, you know, and then we got an opportunity to, to have Havoc on the show, you know, uh, in the past four or five months or whatever, and, you know, to hear those stories about them. And yeah, I was back in December. Up, um, just was, it was just an incredible, long live the mob, and uh, rest in peace to Prodigy, and, and, you know, continue success to have, because Havoc, they're just You know, Havoc such, was just so such, a, was such a wonderfully pleasant person, too. I had never met him before, and one of the things I felt was really cool when he was on the show, he performed, it was very tough for him to perform. Um, he hadn't really done it much at that point. This was just this past December. You know, and I really loved it because, see, the Kendrick crowd is just so loving. <laughs> and they were, like, supporting him through the performance. It's very tough for him emotionally, you could tell. But once again, 
whenever we meet hip hop artists, it's always hilarious because it's like, he's like, man, far away is my shit. I was <laughs> like, ah! So I was excited. So it's good to know when your heroes love your stuff. No, actually, I don't think I have ever met Fife. I mean, I, I, I've met Tip a, a few times. Um, Fife is just another um, hugely influential hip hop legend to us. Uh, we did tribute him when he passed away, but we, we love his music and we, we miss him and we, we hope that, it, and that he rests in peace and that his legacy. He would have benefited long. a lot from that book. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I just feel like. Because of his illness, right? Yeah, I mean, have you. Really, right now, in hip-hop, there's this new conversation, right? So so Quincy Jones' son did this documentary about real wealth and about hip-hop artists being so obsessed with wealth and the trappings of wealth that many older hip-hop artists are starting to understand that true wealth is really your well-being, about being healthy and about moving forward. And having lost so many hip-hop artists to uh, you know, to, die, to to complications with their heart, with heart disease, diabetes, complications with diabetes, you know, all kinds of things that um, that have happened and we've lost people way too soon. The hurtful part about that is just um, wishing and hoping that as a community that we could get better with managing the things that affect, you know, us. That affect us physically.